I welcome you to the fifth lecture of this course title uh, Psychology of Emotions Theory and Applications. So, this is the second lecture of module 2 and overall it is fifth lecture. So, module 2 is about the you know understanding the interaction between culture and emotions. So, in the first lecture of the module 2 that is lecture 4 we discussed what are the evidences for universal expressions of emotions or are there universal emotions across all cultures uh, in terms of expression of facial expressions, vocal expressions, you know uh, physiological uh, arousal and so on. We try to see what are the evidences available. So, in today's lecture we will be uh, talking more about the interaction between culture and emotion or how culture shapes emotions or what are the culture specific differences in terms of expression of emotion. So, before we talk about a little bit of just recap that I will give you about what we have discussed in the last lecture that is lecture 4. So, as I have mentioned that we have discussed are there any universal emotions. Uh, in that context uh, we have discussed primarily in the context of basic emotions some of the uh, you know typical basic emotions that we experience and we discussed uh, whether there are universal facial expression or this facial expression are same across cultures for these basic emotions. Vocal expression uh, means whether people of different cultures you know uh, express those emotion in terms of vocal features similarly and uh, we also discussed are there any physiological aspects of emotion who are, are, are they also similar in different cultures or there are uh, some culture specific differences. So, in all these aspects what we have seen mostly uh, what we have discussed based on the evidence is that you know uh, the cross cultural evidence is there are similarities no doubt evidences have shown there are similarities in the facial expression, vocal expression as well as physiological aspects of emotion. Uh, but those cross cultural similarities are not perfect or the agreement is not perfect across culture. So, there are certain aspects which shows evidences of cross culture aspect, but the evidence was not like 100 percent or agreement is not 100 percent. So, there are there are cultural differences were also reported in lot of these evidences. Uh, a lot of research shows that people from different culture correctly identified most of these basic emotion across cultures above chance which included it which varied percent in terms of percentages from 20 to 90 percent. Uh, you know uh, based on the studies. Uh, uh, some studies you know the range for this percentage differ from studies to studies. However, the evidence shows that there is an there is an in group advantages that means, people from their own cultural group or communities uh, they could identify the emotional expressions in terms of facial or the vocal uh, could identify them in much better. Uh, percentages you, you can say as compared to uh, expressions of people from other cultures. So, there is an in group advantage that was evident in all these evidences uh, that uh, there uh, the rate of uh, no, the percentages of identification was much higher in terms for people whom who are similar to their or who are from their own cultural group. So, largely uh, this was the evidence uh, in physiologically also there are some very few studies were conducted not many studies are available, but some evidences show that there are possibly similar physiological arousal act in response to lot of these basic emotions. But again the evidences are not like very strong. Uh, so, that is also another uh, thing that we have discussed and also at the end we have discussed that you know uh, some researchers move from finding universal emotions uh, shifting from shifted from uh, identifying universal aspects of emotion to more understanding. Uh, Componential theory of emotions, where they try to understand, uh, try to understand whether are there any component of the emotions which are universal, or they are expressed, uh, or those factors are similar, are they similar across cultures? So that is called componential theory. In that context, most of the studies uh, looked at evidences of appraisals associated with the emotions as well as action readiness associated with the emotions. Again, uh, we have discussed that you know most of these evidences are just like facial expressions and vocal expression that the ag cross cultural agreement is not perfect. Uh, there are cross, cross cultural similarities in certain aspect as compared to the other aspects. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last lecture. Uh, in today's lecture, we will be discussing mostly about how are there any cultural difference, what are the cultural difference because evidences in the last lecture have shown 
there are evidences of universal expressions but there are also differences so what are those cultural differences how culture shape those differences in terms of expression of emotion in terms of you know uh, uh, are there any culture specific aspects to emotions so the focus of this lecture will be these aspects so here we will be talking about uh, some of these topics that uh, i have listed here uh, cultural difference in emotional processes in terms of expressing emotions emotional intensity and frequency antecedents events of emotions then we will be discussing explanatory models that can explain all these cultural differences can we explain them using some theoretical model and at the end we will be discuss can we integrate all these differences in the findings how to integrate through a model so this will be uh, the approach of today's lecture so let's start today's lecture so in order to understand how culture shapes emotion we need to understand what is culture so there are many definitions of culture uh, some of these definition just i'll be discussing here one is you know it's a uh, system of ideas so sorry so one uh, is that it's, it's a system of ideas and practices uh, that are held in common in a particular society or set of societies so the basic idea is very simple you know it's a system of ideas that are collectively shared by a group of people it not only include ideas it also includes practices that people do whatever no it could be uh, you know festivals it could be you know religious practices and so on which are commonly shared by a group of people it could be a particular society or a set of societies so that is what we call it culture so another definition is that also it's a kind of socially constructed constellation consisting of things such as practices competencies ideas schemas symbols values norms institutions goals constitutive rules artifacts and modifications of the physical environment so it is little bit more broader in terms of what are the things that could be included in under culture so it's a kind of socially constructed because people collectively construct a reality around them uh, which include lot of things like all the practices that we have discussed it could be social practices it could be religious practices uh, it in include lot of ideas and beliefs when a group of people believe in something you know uh, which could be religious belief it could be a collective how society should function those kind of beliefs it includes symbols values norms institutions goals and so on artifacts etc etc so this concept of culture you know these are all rules that are internalized and create traditions which may be much deeper than the reasons so those traditions may become very much deeper in our psyche and that can influence our behavior belief system and so on even expressions and so on so this cons uh, this the unit of culture could vary from very smaller units to a larger units depending on how you look at it so we can have a culture at the family level you can have a culture at the society level you can have a culture at the regional level we can have a culture at the national level we can even have a global culture so you understand so so uh, the the unit of culture could vary depending on how you look at when it could in it can include 3 4 people believing in something it could be include thousands of people believe in something so unit of culture could vary depending on how you kind of look at it so it is very clear that culture kind of sits deeper into our mind and it may influences your belief system it influences your expression of behavior it may influences your perceptions and everything so cultural psychology has come into very big way in nowadays in uh, in the field of psychology where people are looking at how culture is shaping human behavior so there is no doubt that culture can influence lot of aspects of our behavior including the emotional expression and so on so that we will be looking in this particular lecture so what are the cultural differences in the emotional processes so as we have already seen in the last lecture that there are universal aspects to basic at least basic emotions that it is kind of shared across all all kind of culture in terms of facial expression in terms of vocal expression lot of things are similarly expressed in different cultures obviously uh, those studies also showed that there are differences but there are universal aspects no doubt to it however some researchers study this topic of emotion and culture by asking the opposite question the first was what where we have seen the evidences is about are there universal emotion or aspects to of emotion here we will be looking at what are the cultural differences in emotion how cult is it like you know uh, what are the 
culture specific aspects to emotions rather than universal aspects. So, a lot of these people who are from the cultural perspective looking at emotions uh, that they, uh, they kind of argue that we can truly understand emotions by considering culture in which occurs. Because emotions are not like you know isolated thing, they are expressed in a context. So, the, that culture is a context. So, how they are expressed in those cultural contexts, we should take look into that also to in order to understand the culture in a much more holistic ways. So, they are interested in studying cultural models as a constant context of understanding and predicting emotional responses. So, they are looking at culture as a kind of explanatory model uh, to understand the expression of emotion. So, we will be looking at some of the evidences. So, in terms of expression emotion, we have already seen that you know uh, Ekman and Kulik's kind of they have already found that expression and interpretation of basic emotions are kind of universal. Those studies also showed that there may be cultural differences in the expression of many emotions. Okay. So, basic emotions lot of cultural similarities as evidenced in the last lecture, particularly lot of researches were from the Paul Ekman and colleagues found those kind of universal aspects. However, culture can there can be culture specific expression of emotion also. For example, in uh, many Indian states because this study was uh, looked at uh, Urissa state which showed that facial expression for lajja means shame is the, lock, is the term that is used. Uh, it is a very unique cultural expression of this emotion is that people bite one's tongue, biting one's tongue when people experience shame as an emotion. It is a very culture specific, this expression is not observed in western countries like USA. So, this can be seen a very, very specific culture specific expression of emotions that this is not found in other cultures. So, this could be an evidence or example of how culture can shape expression of emotion because this is like lot of people express this particular emotion in a similar way. So, people learn it from looking at other people. Now, culture can there can be cultural differences in the intensity of emotional facial expression. Now, facial expression obviously, there can be some broader differences in uh, facial expression, uh, but culture can also influence the intensity of emotion uh, you know, of emotional facial expression. What is the intensity in no, intensity of expression of that emotion could also differ from culture to culture. Same emotion, but in some culture the intensity of expression may be dif different uh, from other cultures. So, that intensity may also differ uh, depending on uh, culture to cultures. So, we will see some of these evidences. So, at the most basic level culture differ in the intensity of the emotional experience. It is possible that you know intensity may differ. For example, uh, some cultures such as United States these are some of the generalized you know, findings. Uh, United States exhibit very strong facial expression. Cultures, most of these western cultures probably, uh, there is a kind of norms of exhibiting very strong facial expression. So, whenever they ex experience certain emotions, it may be associated with very strong facial expression. While some other cultures such as Japan exhibit more subtle expressions. For example, in the context of expression of anger or sadness other thing you know people in the countries like Japan their expressions are very subtle you know you may not notice much in their face. Uh, but in uh, countries like USA and other uh, western countries the expression of those emotion could be very evident very strongly expressed. So, there is an example how culture to culture intensity of expression of emotion can be different. So, why these differences happens across cultures? One of the reason is display rules. So, what is display rules? Because that is the cultures have different rules on which emotions should be displayed and which should be hidden and under what circumstances. So, that is called display rules. So, these display rules are kind of you know kind of covert or overt it could be you know people learn from their environment through the socialization of other people in a particular culture that how to express your emotions you know. If expression of emo, uh, certain emotions may not be encouraged in a culture, 
some emotion may be more encouraged, some emotion may not be that encouraged depending on a those cultural contexts or norms of those society. Certain rules or people understand certain rules, these rules become kind of inherent in their psyche. So, these are called display rules and this display rule guides those expression. For example, lot of this display, display rule we learn as, as we become adult. For example, uh, during a job interview, generally we attempt not to appear nervous, we try to be show our best selves just you know by manipulating all the expression of emotion. Uh, people try not to be angry if a gas spills something on your carpet because it is it is kind of display rule is it is kind of under you know people have general this rule that you know otherwise the person may feel bad or we try not to laugh when a friend says something dumb or like this you know just to make other person comfortable. So, this could be some of the inherent rules that we understand and accordingly we try to manipulate our expression of emotions. So, this display rules are there in different cultures and they may differ from culture to culture and accordingly the expression of emotions will also be different based on those display rules. So, we learn all these norms from the people around us and rules and expectations differ slightly among cultures. So, those rules may differ from culture to culture. For example, adults in Europe and the United States particularly men are forbidden from crying in public. Forbidden means in the sense it is not that they cannot cry, only thing is that this is a kind of understanding that you know, uh, you know man particularly has a these norms given to them that they, sh they should not express, this is expected from them not to cry in front of public or something like this is kind of you know covert rule that is given. But this restriction is even stricter in other countries like China where people may not really you know cry in front of public or something. So, this rule may be much more stricter in other other countries like China and um, it is there in other cultures, but the, that is it may not be that strict like Europe and United States. So, these are like that that people it is not that people of these cultures do not cry in front of other, but the kind of expectation is there. So, that will kind of manipulate how they express those emotions. One study was conducted uh, in the context of this display rules by Friesen. Uh, in that study, uh, he compared the behavior of Japanese and American participants while they watched disgusting videos of surgical procedures. You know. So, they were trying to look at whether people, uh, you know, participant from Japan or participant from America do they differ in terms of expression of emotions where they manipulated situations where no expression of emotion was evident they were supposed to express you know. So, that manipulation has happened and how that was manipulated by showing them videos of disgusting surgical procedures. So, when you see something very disgusting you will express disgust as an emotion. So, they were looking at whether this expression differs for Japanese participant as well as American participants, so how they differ. So, that was the kind of study it was done, it is one of the earlier classic study in on display rules. So, this uh, undergraduate participants watch movies alone first, though in the first they watch them alone means, alone means they were there just, no one else out, outsider was, were not there. Then they, they watched this vi video in in the company of an experimenter dressed as a graduate student, company of an experimenter dressed as a graduate student and wearing a lab coat. So, there was a experimenter associate was also there in another condition. In one condition it was just alone they looked at it, in another condition uh, this both the participant from both the countries they watched those videos in the company of an experimenter who was dressed uh, in a particular formal wearing of a lab coat and so on. So, what they found that the both the countries, countries participants that is Japan and USA were disgusted obviously, they expressed their disgust as an emotion when they watched the film alone. When they were alone they were looking at those uh, uh, videos of surgical procedure, both the participants America as well as Japanese they express disgust. Uh, Japanese participant conceal their distaste 
with a polite smile when the experimenter entered the room. However, when the experimenter entered the room, there was a difference in the expression of both American as well as Japanese. So, Japanese participant concealed, they tried to hide their expression much more than as compared to Americans. Americans participants were not at all trying to hide, no? but Japanese they expressed disgust while alone, but when the uh, experimenter entered the room, they were you know, uh, trying to hide those expression by polite smile and so on. So, why? So, that, that was a one kind of cultural difference that was evident in that experiment. So, one of the thing why this could happen is that Japan places a greater emphasis on the social hierarchy than the United States and it is considered impolite to express unpleasant emotions when some to someone of high status. So, it is one of the kind of uh, because of this display rule that was there in differences in those cultures. So, in Japan it is given much more importance of social hierarchy and when an experimenter supposed to be of higher status you know comes to the room it is generally considered impolite to express unpleasant emotion. So, they were kind of hiding their those expression much more as compared to Americans. So, this display rule was there in the Japanese culture. So, that influenced their expression. However, in the case of American participant uh, that um, uh, experimenter um, was less influencing their expression, they were not uh, really much hiding their feelings. So, they because that display rule was not there in the American culture. So, they did not find any cause to hide their feelings. Okay. So, this was one of the reasons why this happened. So, uh, this study clearly shows that how display rule could could you know impact the expression of emotion. Now, some research also found that cultural difference could be in the ex content of the expression, not just intensity of expression, how one expresses, but content of the expression could also differ from culture to culture. So, in the last uh, study we have discussed the how cultural differences in the intensity of emotional expression but there could be differences in the actual content of the expression also. In one of the studies uh, uh, done where done by Elfenbein and Embedi 2002, they basically kind of did a meta analysis where they uh, tried to summarize the findings of a lot of studies on expression of uh, exp, uh, you know, existing expression recognition studies. They discovered that when participant judge someone this was I think I, we have also discussed similar studies in the fourth lecture. They discovered that when uh, participants judge someone from the same national, ethnic or regional group, their accuracy was cons consistently greater than when the photos of someone from different culture. So, we kind of discussed this of in group advantages, the people who are always better at judging emotional expression from the people of their own cultural group as compared to someone outside. So, that means what? Clearly, there may be some differences otherwise why they are better in you know, understanding or recognizing uh, expression of emotion from their own culture as compared to other means there may be, must be some differences otherwise why these differences? This expression there may be some differences in the expression that is why there is there is uh, that is uh, why there is a differences in the recognition also. So, this clearly you know has an implication for cultural differences at least in some aspects. So, this clearly implies that people from different culture exhibit slightly varied facial expression even for basic emotions. There must be some slight differences that is why there is an in group advantage is there in terms of recognition of emotion. So, this leads to the theory of uh, dialect theory of facial expression. A dialect is kind of we understand in the context of language that you know people same language can differ slightly as we move from region to region or from one place to another place. The same language, but people the way they say it some words here and there will be different. So, this is called dialect you know dialects may be different. So, one can speak uh, Hindi for example, but there can be differences the way people speak that language from place to place you know. 
so there may be different dialects there may be bhojpuri hindi there may be maithili hindi and so on so their pronunciation the way they say may differ little bit here and there but the overall it's a hindi hindi language but dialects are different so that is the whole idea of uh, that people who live in different cultures also have kind of dialects of expression of emotion facial expression so this is the same emotion but here the expression may differ here and there a little bit you know so that is called the dialect of uh, facial expression just like people of different regions of a country pronounce the same word differently you know they may pronounce it differently same language they may be speaking but the, the way they say some words may be different so that is called dialect similarly this may happen the same emotions people are expressing but uh, it, there may be subtle differences so that is called as a dialect theory of facial expression of emotion to test this hypothesis uh, elfenbein and colleagues uh, did an experiment to understand whether this dialect theory is right or not to prove this hypothesis they asked participant to from two french speaking regions so both the regions speak french but probably you know with a different uh, dialects or or people two french speaking region one is Cuba in Canada and Gabon in uh, Sahara Africa. So these are both speak both the regions speak French, but you know they tried to see you know kind of uh, they took the participant from both the region uh, to pose expression of anger, fear, sadness, disgust, happiness, surprise. Basically, these are mostly the basic emotions. so how they did so rather than asking the poser to uh, use specific facial muscles the researcher gave them uh, each emotional phrase and asked them so they uh, gave them some phrase related to some emotion and asked them to pose the expression of uh, that their peers could easily comprehend you know so they asked to pose let's say angry face pose face for sadness and so on so this is something they asked them to make facial muscles so that others could understand what emotion they are going through or expressing so as expected the expression posed by people from two cultures differ in modest but consistent way so what they found those expression were little bit different in these two cultures how the participant from these two cultures they express the emotions but there were subtle differences but in consistent ways for example how they found the displays of happiness by cubes were more likely to be involved constriction of the muscles surrounding the eyes whereas gabonese participants uh, the expression of uh, happiness were more likely to include an open mouth the same emotion happiness both the cultures part participants express it slightly differently so cubes uh, cube uh, participant from uh, Cubes were more likely to involve constriction of muscles around the eyes. So around the eyes, the muscles were much more constricted. Uh, it was much more pronounced for these participants. For Gabonese participants, the open mouth was much more, you know, it was more pronounced. So although the same emotions, but subtle differences in the facial expressions. Importantly, the uh, features of each pose expressions in both cultures were similar to the prototypical expression. It was all happy, happy expression. One could make that these two uh, individuals are expressing happiness, but uh, prototypical expression was there. But subtle muscle differences were there, as we have discussed. So these are kind of proves the dialect theory of expression of emotion. now we look at some of the evidences of cultural difference in interpreting facial expressions so we have seen uh, how it could differ in terms of expressions intensity uh, and other aspects uh, now we'll discuss is it also possible that there are cultural difference in the interpretation how do you interpret a facial expression so as people from different cultures show emotion somewhat differently at least in subtle ways we can expect them to interpret emotional displays uh, also differently so some of the studies here we'll again discuss uh, uh, in in a study by uh, matsumoto and ekman looked uh, in 1989 looked into this issue 
So, participants in the United States and Japan were shown images of different prototypical emotion expressed by employee in Caucasians and Japanese posers. So, these two uh, participants from these two, two, two countries, United States and Japan, they are shown emotions of different basic prototypical emotions by these uh, people from both the cultures. Japanese poser as well as Caucasian culture for the, or the white European people. Regardless of the poser ethnicity, Japanese writer, so it was shown to both the groups, Japanese, American and uh, the posing of the Japanese people, posing of the western people were shown to both the groups, you know, from people from different culture and the poser also, also from different culture. So, both these poses were shown to both these people, both this group of people. So, regardless of the poser ethnicity, whether pose was given uh, shown by Japanese people or Caucasian people, uh, Japanese participants tend to give smaller intensity of rating to both the positive and as well as negative emotions the poser express. So, one thing was very evident was that the Japanese, they were asked to rate the intense, you know, kind of uh, um, intensity of, of the emotional expression by these posers. Uh, regardless of whoever posed, whether it was posed by a Japanese individual or, you know, western participant, western posers, Japanese participant rated this intensity, smaller intensity for both positive and negative emotions as compared to the American or uh, participants. So, so, Japanese people, the intensity they kind of whatever intensity that was expressed, they, they kind of uh, you know kind of rated them low intensity as compared to others. So, let us say in a rating of 5 point scale I say, let us say somebody has expressed anger. So, the person might have rated the anger let us say 4 in a scale of 1 to 5 by an American, the same expression was rated by Japanese probably 2 or 3 or something like that. So, the, this is just an example. Similarly, in another study when people looked at photographs of relatively weak expression, uh, so weak expression means it was not very strong, let us say anger, so no very, not, not a very strong anger expression, but weak e expression. Uh, Japanese people estimated a stronger underlying emotion than Americans. When somebody express weak expression of anger, they sh rated that actual experience of the anger was much stronger as compared to the Americans. So, you see, you see there is a difference in terms of when, uh, in terms of how they judge the underlying emotion, in terms of facial expression and uh, when the face were posed with all these emotions. Uh, how it was rated by Japanese and Americans, it was different, you know. So, uh, so one of the possible explanation that is given why these Japanese people differed in terms of uh, rating of intensity of emotion was that Japanese people are accustomed uh, to hiding their emotions in public. They may assume that a person was feeling strongly and only partially hiding when they witness a weak emotional reaction. So, one of the reason when weak emotional expression was rated by Japanese as compared to the actual you know, intensity of emotion, the Japanese people are generally in their cultural norms and display rules, they are more accustomed to hiding their emotions in public. Uh, so, they may assume even if person is uh, was feeling very strongly they are partially hiding it when they witness a weak emotional reaction. You know? So, even the person was weakly expressing emotion, they, act, they kind of judged it that underlying emotion was much stronger because this is how they do it. So, that is one explanation of the finding that we have discussed in the last slide. Americans might be more likely to believe that an expression is genuine. Generally, because this is how the cultural thing, whatever you feel, you express it, you know, the way you feel it. Uh, genuine when it is moderately or very intense, but Japanese people uh, might assume that such dramatic displays are most likely fake. In another instance of the study where we find no, 
uh, when the poles are express emotion, Japanese people always rated low intensity. So, this could be one of the reason why this has happened. So, they may think you know uh, such a dramatic displays are mostly fake. Uh, because this is not expressed actually. So, believe that an expression is genuine when it is moderately or very intense, but American people are likely to believe the way it is, uh, the way people are feeling the express expression is also similar. So, frequencies of is another thing where the lot of research also found that the frequency of expression of emotion, certain emotions are more frequently expressed in some culture as compared to other. So, there could be some cultural difference here. So, we will see some evidences here. So, there are distinction between cultures when it comes to the most common and intense feeling. The most which com emotions are most strongly experienced. So, that may also differ uh, in terms of culture. Kitayama and colleagues also used a bottom up culture sensitive methodology to compare emotional experiences in the United States and Japan in a series of studies. So, again they took participants from United States and uh, Japan because they are culturally very different in terms of expression of emotion to prove this point. So, in one of the first study the participant from both the cultures Japan and uh, USA just the degree to which uh, degree to which certain emotions were reflected both common American and common Japanese emotional words. So, this was one of the objectives of the one of the study first study that you know uh, they were asked uh, participants were asked to judge the degree of certain emotional words reflected in to what degree certain emotional words are kind of common in their cultures. This rating revealed uh, emotional domain characterized by positive that is uh, valence positive and negative and social engagement component. So, list of emotions and they tried rated them on balance positive negative and social engagement whether socially engaging or disengaging. Socially engaging emotions include like friend, friendliness and shame is a kind of negative emotion, but it is good in the social context. So, it is in that sense it is socially engaging because it accentuates and reinforces the relationship relationship may it is better considered good. In contrast socially disengaging feelings like pride or anger highlight and strengthen the autonomy and superiority of the individual it is generally disengaging it kind of breaks the relationship. Balance dimensions means positive and negative social dimension was kind of a kind of new thing that was introduced because a lot of studies were already conducted on positive and negative aspects. Uh, this is one of the study where social engagement dimension was included. So, Kitayama and colleagues subsequently research provided support for the hypothesis that emotions that are most beneficial in managing relationship in managing relationship in a given culture environments are experienced most. So, the emotions which are most beneficial for managing relationship in that culture are experienced most frequently and most intensely. So, the, because their relevance is much more stronger in that culture. Now, which one is this may differ from culture to culture. So, that is what uh, this studies have found, but relationship management the emotions that are associated with relationship management are most intensely experienced and more frequently experienced in the context of that culture. So, this study is discovered that socially disengaging emotions such as pride and anger were most common and intense in European American culture. So, these emotions were more frequently and more strongly experienced in those culture according to the rating of the participants, uh, where successful relationships are defined by individual autonomy and independence, okay, where relationships are defined based on autonomy of the individual and independence whenever there is a problem with the independence and autonomy lot of conflicts may happen. So, the cultural idea of what is what should what should matter in one's life is like individual autonomy and independence. So, this was um, discovered in one of the findings. In contrast they found socially engaging emotions such as friendly feeling and guilt were more common and intense in East Asian cultural context where good relationships are defined by 
relationship and interdependence. So, in those cultures, particularly Japan and other cultures, where community living and uh, interdependence, social re relationship given much more importance. So, in those cases, socially engaging emotion uh, were more intense and more commonly experienced as compared to European and American cultures. So, the idea is conclusion is emotions that meet the cultural paradigm are more frequent and intense. So, this emotional practice differs across cultures. So, this shows which emotions are experienced more frequently and more intensely may differ from culture to culture depending on what, what emotions are more you know uh, defined in the relationship context. So, in that context certain emotions are more experienced more given more importance as compared to the others. So, uh, another dimensions where uh, certain cultural differences are also observed called in the antecedent antecedents of events of emotions. What events leads to experience of certain emotion? So, if I experience something positive, I will experience happiness. So, the antecedent events is that positive event or let us say um, I achieve a goal, then I experience happiness or joy. So, the antecedent event is reaching a goal. So, reaching a goal is an antecedent. So, this which events leads to what emotions may also differ from culture to culture. So, these are all very interesting findings that shows how people gives importance to different thing in different culture and accordingly uh, led to different experiences of emotions. So, culture may influence situation that lead to certain emotions. So, a lot of cultural because the norms are different, uh, social structures are different. So, that can also influence what events leads to certain emotions. So, if a situation is more likely to occur in a culture, then accompanying emotion associated with those situations are more likely to occur. So, if a certain situations are more likely to occur in a culture because of the social context, then the emotions that are experienced because of that situation are more likely to experience. It is very simple because the situations are happening more and more experienced by people. So, the emotions associated with the situa situation will also be experienced more and more. So, that is the general idea. So, culture tend to create more opportunities for certain events because of the structure of the events and uh, context of the society. It provides opportunity for different events and situation that are consistent with prevailing cultural values and models and it may suppress certain events that are inconsistent. So, in certain culture certain situations or events may be more pronounced and some situation may be suppressed by those culture because it is not encouraged in those cultures, certain situations. So, we will see uh, some of this uh, concept that we have discussed in one of the experiment. Shriar and colleagues in 1988, they also these are kind of very uh, some of the classic studies that were done earlier, you know, try to uncover the antecedent events of four emotions. So, they did a study to understand in different cultures for these four emotion anger sadness happiness and fear what are what leads to these emotions in different cultures in the massive survey of uh, americans europeans and japanese so different cultures it's a massive survey was done it, they included uh, participants from eight countries so the participants were asked to describe instances in which they felt these four emotions so the uh, how the experiment was done they were all the participants were asked to describe a situation that led to these emotions. So, describe a situation that led you to experience anger, that led you to experience sadness, happiness. So, one by one they were asking and uh, then uh, categorized as belonging to one of the several different groups or specific themes. So, then they categorized what led to this emotion into different themes. Researcher then predicted the hypothesis that you know great degree of uniformity will be there in the frequencies of different scenarios across all these cultures. So, they kind of thought that similar situation will lead to different uh, emotional experience. Uh, this was kind of their expectations, but this was not the case. Uh, they found that joy was connected or happiness was connected to a variety of events particularly in Japan. So, the variety of events was much more in case of Japan as compared to the other countries. Uh, cultural pleasures, births and bodily pleasures were 
for examples uh, were more essential for Europeans and Americans, but they were far less frequent antecedent of joy for Japanese. So, what leads to joyful experience also let differ from you know for this kind of cultures. So, some of these things like bodily pleasures, births and so on were more essential for Europeans and Americans, but this was given less importance. Uh, they were not that important for the experience of joy for Japanese people. They also found accomplishment were significantly more for source of satisfaction for Americans and Europeans than the Japanese. So, when you accomplish something in your life, this was given much more importance in the American and European culture as compared to the Japanese. They also found the cause of sadness also differed in, in those cultures. Death for example, was far less common antecedent of event for Japanese grief than it was for Americans and Europeans. So, death as a reason for grief was less common for Japanese people as compared to American and European. So, death was not as you know obviously, it will be a grief e event full of grief, but it was less for Japanese as compared to Americans and Europeans. So, that cause also kind of differ you know. So, which may have some cultural belief system associated with the de you know grief might have you know, led to led to some of these things. Uh, Americans were more frequently distressed by separation, while Japanese were more affected by interpersonal troubles. So, this was also difference found in the antecedent of event. Separation led to more distress for Americans uh, as compared to Japanese and Japanese were more affected by interpersonal troubles, troubles in the relationships and uh, between people with Europeans falling somewhere in the middle uh, in the middle of both the sorts of events. Europeans somewhere they are not that extreme. So, for uh, separation it was highly distressing for Americans, Europeans were somewhere in the middle and Japanese were much less in the other extreme. Uh, but in case of interpersonal trouble, Japanese were very much concerned in terms of uh, distress and Europeans were falling somewhere middle. So, these are some of the cultural difference that was observed. They also further found that when confronted with unexpected even in the context of relationship, Japanese uh, felt fear more than the Americans and Europeans conf when confronted with unexpected events. So, there was some cultural difference here also. Finally, the cause of anger were also varied. What causes anger in different cultures? Americans and to lesser extent Europeans felt the greatest anger in the context of close relationships. The context of close relationships, whenever people interact with each other in the close relationship, anger was more experienced in those contexts. Japanese felt the most anger in the context of strangers, when stranger did something or something like that. So, that was a very, this is also very interesting in the context of culture. So, in the context of strangers, Japanese experienced most of the anger, American European felt most of the angers in the context of close relationships. Injustice angered Americans more, American and Europeans more than more frequently than Japanese. When injustice happened, Americans and Europeans were more frequently experienced anger as compared to Japanese. So, these are also certain other differences they observed. So, these are some of the interesting findings across cultures which shows that there can be differences in the culture in terms of expression of emotions, in terms of you know experience of the emotion, in terms of intensity of the emotion, in terms of actual content of the emotion. Uh, so, a lot of variations can happen you know. Uh, despite some universal aspects are there you know. So, let us see can we have some explanatory model to explain these cultural differences or culture specific expression of emotions. Can we broadly use a theoretical model to understand that? So, one of the model that can explain these differences is called the dimension of individualism and collectivism as a cultural dimension. So, all world cultures broadly uh, can be categorized either individualistic culture or collectivist culture. So, this explanation can also help us to understand some of the these differences in the findings. 
So, culture can range from individualism to collectivism and some culture may be combination of these two somewhere in between. So, researcher classify culture as individualistic or collectivist based on how the society defines certain basic aspects of their life, how they explain some of the things, how they look at certain those culture shapes our belief system, our ideas and thinking process. So, based on those differences, some cultures are more individualistic, some are collectivist. So, these are some of the differences you can see uh, how these two cultures can differ. Individualistic culture, there can be many countries which are individualistic culture, we will look into that, where the con concept of self is considered independent, you know. Individualistic culture identify uh, from individual traits, you know, how your self is importance of more independent self is given importance. You are more independent, your own achievement, your own life, uh, how you more sense of independent self is given more importance. In the collectivist culture, interdependent self is more dominant, where you, know, you identify yourself or explain yourself more in the context of relationship with other people in the society. So, interdependent, you are not alone, your life is dependent on the relationships and the societies and other things. So, more interdependent concept of self is dominant. So, what matters in individualistic culture? Personal achievement because it is independent sense of self, personal achievement, fulfillment, liberty, self esteem, these are given more importance. In, in collectivist culture because it is interdependent, so group goals how as a group, as a society you are doing, group goals, solidarity, social responsibilities, relationship, family duty, these are given much more importance. So, goal of individualistic culture is to discover and express one uniqueness, your own life expressions, you know, those kind of things are given more importance. Here focus, goal is more to maintain connections, relationship, fit in, perform roles and so on, social roles and those things. How they cope in the individualistic culture by changing reality because they think you know their own independent life and they can change things and those things. Here they accommodate with their social reality more and they try to fit in rather than changing the reality. Concept of morality is defined in individualistic culture by individualistic mostly self based concept. Here it is defined mostly by social networks or duty based morality is both given importance here. Attributing behavior in the individualistic culture, behavior reflects one's personality and attitudes. Here it reflects more of social norms and roles. So, you can see broadly they have these traits are very different. So, some of the research says that you know uh, North American nations support individualistic ideas. A lot of these western countries are basically considered more individualistic in nature, uh, while East Asian and some African nations. Uh, East Asian and some African nations are generally more collectivist values are given more importance. Some European countries are considered probably a combination of cultures, some could be very individualistic. So, it is uh, sometimes lot of these ideas of individualistic collectivism are probably may not be so rigidly there in culture in practicality. Uh, may fall short in capturing every culture, but broadly you know some of individualism dimensions may be more prominent in some culture as compared to other and some culture collectivist ideas are more dominant. Mm, so, that uh, may not be so strictly every culture like individualistic collectivist, uh, but some traits may be more dominant in all culture as compared to other. Uh, in the context of India, some people consider it more towards collectivist, but again things are fluid you know keeps changing as the time passes uh, and also it depends on uh, the cities and rural areas the values may also differ you know probably in the rural areas collectivist culture is much more dominant even in countries like India where metro cities and other where individualistic anyway because of the lifestyle it is much more individualistic in those cities and other one. So, um, so in real life uh, countries may also differ, but you know some dominant traits may be there in some countries uh, as compared to others. So, individually, so we can divide at least some countries based on those dominant traits. Some may be considered more individualistic, some may be considered collectivist. So, how could emotional life be impacted by this individualism and collectivism? 
let us see or how can we use this model to explain all these emotional differences across cultures, expression of culture differences. So, research other that cultural differences in individualism and collectivism can serve as an explanatory model for emotional differences across culture, whatever evidences we have looked at, uh, such as differences in expressing and interpreting facial expressions. So, all this expression, the differences that we have looked in the evidences, this can explain, how this can explain? For example, we have found consistently Japanese people differ from uh, western people in terms of expression of emotion. Lot of these cultural differences were found mostly with the context of Japanese people. So, Japanese people are generally found to inhibit or suppress negative emotions that we have seen in the lot of this research. One explanation could be the collectivist nature of Japanese culture because of which people suppress negative emotions in order to maintain group unity and put the demands of the group above their own. So, if you are very individualistic culture, culture where you stay and it is very individualistic, you do your own thing, then obviously, whatever you feel you will express it more. But when it is a collectivist culture where you are more concerned how other people will look at you, how it will influence the relationship with other people, if you are more concerned about the other people you will modulate your expression of emotion much more to maintain that relationship. So, this is what happens in the Japanese culture uh, that people inhibit or suppress negative emotion, so that it, it does not influence others negatively to maintain the group harmony and other things. So, one ex this is one of the explanation which can, ex can be explained using this individualistic and collectivist dimension. The, is a collective nation may suppress negative emotion in order to maintain group unity and put the demands of the group above their own. So, group, uh, uh, the maintaining group harmony is much more important than just your own thing. So, they will modulate their emotions to give importance to the group harmony as, as compared to their own thing. So, this could be one of the reason to explain these differences. According to some research, collectivism may encourage experience of specific type of emotions, whereas individualism may discourage certain emotion. For example, it is possible that in the context of self conscious emotions will be different between individualistic and collectivist culture. So, some emotions may be more experienced in collectivist culture. So, why those differences in the frequency of emotion? This can also be explained by using this because in the collectivist culture, uh, the emotions which are related to more group or societal context. Uh, would be given much more importance as compared to your own self. For example, pride for example, could be more experienced in individualistic culture as compared to collectivist culture. So, let us say pride um, um, could be detrimental to group harmony and other thing. So, it could be more experienced in individualistic culture because the focus is on individual. It could be less experienced in uh, collectivist culture because this can be detrimental to group harmony and so on. So, like this, uh, this can explain lot of things. Stipek also tested this hypothesis that people in collectivist culture would feel pride and shame that we have discussed in response to their friends and relatives action. So, another study was done to understand these differences, particularly in the context of pride and shame as an emotion. When they experience pride and shame and how they experience pride and shame in the context of close people around them. So, th she tested this hypothesis using American and Chinese students. So, Chinese is more collectivist, America is more individualistic culture. So, they used a scenario study where scenario study basically means the participants were given a scenario, a situation and they need to think about those situation. So, the participants were asked to rate their emotion, particularly pride, guilt and shame in a scenario where they themselves are involved in where their close family member is involved. So, they are given two situations, one situations of getting admission into a prestigious university, they are getting and their close relate relatives. If this is one scenario study. In another scenario study was the case of uh, cheating, when they are involved in that cheating and their close relationships relatives are involved in cheating, how they explain those situation. So, in the scenario of getting accepted in a prestigious university, Americans said that they would equally be proud if they or their child were accepted to a prestigious university. So, they said whether they are got accepted or their child is getting accepted, they will feel equally proud. 
but Chinese respondent said they would be more proud if their child was accepted as compared to themselves. So, this was one of the differences they found in the case of proud, pride, uh, how they experience. So, Chinese people experience more pride, they would experience more pride in the context of others, close people around them as compared to Americans where they they are also experienced for close people, but they are themselves included in that also. In case of cheating scenario, Chinese participant reported feeling more guilt and shame than Americans. So, cheating case regardless of who did it, whether they did it or their close relatives did it, Chinese participant reported more stronger rating on guilt and shame as compared to Americans. And people in both the countries reported feeling more guilt and shame if they were caught. In both the cases, Americans as well as Chinese, if they are caught in the situations of cheating, they said they will feel more guilt and shame as compared to when they, their relatives are caught. However, there was a difference Chinese participants reported feeling more guilt and shame in the brother cheating scenario than Americans. So, in case of if let us say their brother is found in cheating scenario, Chinese participant reported more guilt and shame as compared to Americans. So, again this shows the collectivist dimension how relationship matters more in collectivist culture as compared to individualistic culture that can explain why this is happening. So, therefore, this individualism and collectivism dimension of culture can explain the context of emotional experience. At least this can explain can it be used as an explanatory model of all these differences in the culture specific expression of emotions. So, the last thing that we will be talking about here is how do we integrate all these diverse findings related to culture and emotions. You know, on the one hand, certain aspect of emotion appear to be universal as we have seen in the lecture 4. On the other hand, we also found that culture has a very strong influence on our emotional life as we have discussed in today's lecture. So, both the aspects are there. How do you integrate all these findings? So, the, although the evidence supports both of these viewpoints, there are supports to both of these viewpoints, the researchers highlight the universal aspect while others emphasize cultural differences. So, is it possible to combine both these aspects of research or findings and how do we explain that using some theoretical models? So, let us see that. So, there is one theory that can explain all these diverse findings. This is called as uh, Ekman's Paul Ekman, who is the one of the celebrated personality in the you know, in the uh, research of basic emotions. He gave a neurocultural theory of emotion, which kind of integrate a lot of these findings. One is this theory says the first explicit attempt to describe where and how culture could influence universal expression of emotions. Paul Ekman uh, provided this theory. He said more specifically <coughs> uh, this theory was developed to account for both the aspects, cultural as well as universal aspects. So, according to this theory, events in the environment may trigger specific appraisal and interpretation which in turn may cause emotion. So, any event that happens in the environment, it triggers certain mental interpretation. You judge it positive, negative, bad, dangerous. Accordingly, you experience physiology, uh, you, you experience certain emotions and every emotion has a biological component to it. Uh, so, if you experience fear, you autonomic nervous system will get activated, you know certain biases, cognitive biases will come or the facial expression will happen automatically. So, these are already programmed thing in your body, physiological arousal, facial expression. Uh, so, uh, these are produced by natural and universal facial, facial action program. These are biologically built program, automatically this thing will happen. So, when the circumstances are right, both these biological characteristics and consciously held motives result in prototypical emotional behavior. So, all these factors lead to prototypical behavior that we show after when we experience certain emotions. Naturally, this is what happens. Now, Ekman said with effort it is possible to counteract some of these uh, facial action program induced expressions with some practice. For example, you know in, in terms of when uh, the kind of surroundings they were put, the kind of way people behave, slowly slowly we can also do something other than what this biologically programmed system does. 
we can override that little bit and we can counteract some of this facial expression some of this expression can be different based on how we practice it. Uh, so, little bit of program thing can be changed here and then little bit counteract those expressions. One can even develop a habit of overriding the natural expression after repeatedly doing it on the same kind of situation over and time. So, if you do it again and again from childhood override those biological program system slowly slowly this can become a natural thing. So, therefore, display rules of cultures lot of this culture where there is a lot of differences in terms of some expressions and here and there things were found. Uh, this because the person is born in a culture you know sees this thing from the childhood and the, the person practices it again and again. Uh, this uh, practice can override this biologically induced universal expression. So, some of this uh, biologically induced universal expression can be override and some differences may be expressed because of this cultural display rules and other things that we learn and practice again and again. So, it is shown Ekman uh, this is taken from one of the publication of Paul Ekman. Uh, this is how it is shown. So, certain environmental things happens, it induces this biological thing, facial effect program, facial muscles associated with all these emotions, basic emotion. He is mostly talking about basic emotions. So, some event happens in the environment, this is a pan cultural thing, this is universal thing. For these basic emotions, facial muscle effect program for these basic emotions will be same across culture this is pan cultural. So, it will induce automatic biological programs which are similar across cultures. However, this display rules influenced by culture can override some of this facial effect program or some of this expression. For example, it can override the intensity what intensity you express cultural display rule can influence or de-intensify, it may intensify, it may become much more stronger as compared to what you naturally experience based on the cultural norms or it can de-intensify, it can also neutralize, you can mask, all these things can happen because of this display rules of the culture. So, then ultimately you ex express those things as per what display rule uh, after the impact of this display rule. So, certain changes may happen in the facial, motor adaptive patterns, barbell, vocal, physiological certain ch changes may happen, uh, it is possible. So, this is something that was explained by this uh, neurocultural uh, model of Ekman. So, in summary Ekman's neurocultural theory of emotion asserts that these are universal, there are universal facial expression associated with basic emotions particularly, but cultural factors can modulate the display and interpretation of this emotions with specific cultural context. So, this can modulate. So, with this I will stand today's lecture. So, this is uh, in the nutshell about how culture can interact with the emotions, uh, how culture and emotions interact and uh, gives all these diverse expressions and uh, all these evidences that we have looked at and what are the reasons behind these evidences. So, I hope this will clarify and give lot of insights about culture and emotion. Thank you.